أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إن الصلاة ونسكي ومحياي ومماتي لله رب العالمين لا شريك له وبذلك أمرت وأنا أول المسلمين صدق الله العظيم All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We glorify Him And we thank Him for His many blessings and favors upon us I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah He is alone and He has no partner And I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger. Ibadallah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran about the purpose of life, the reason behind everything that Allah has bestowed upon us, resources, who is it for? Everything that Allah gave to us, Allah wants us to know that it is from Him and we need to have ikhlas, sincerity, in our intentions with regards to the usage of what Allah has given to us. And so we have that famous ayah in the Quran where we are being reminded, Qul say, Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. Say, Verily, my prayers, my sacrifice, my living, my dying are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that Allah gave, when we use it, we use it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so even though we may be benefiting others, our families, our spouses, our children, our brothers, our sisters, our communities. The, the, the niya behind it, it is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not do things for show. We do not do it just because we want others to give us good names, to say good things about us. We, we do not in any way associate anything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. La sharika la. There is no association of partners with him. This is what I have been commanded and I am 
one who has surrendered my life to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It ought not to be just a saying, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. We are just coming out of a beautiful season, a season in which we enjoyed the best days of the year, a season in which we were reminded about sacrifice, its purpose, a season in which we were reminded of the, the strength of Iman and what it does for us, a season in which we were reminded of family, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together and not allowing anything to deter them from their purpose. A season in which we were reminded that shaitan will always try to influence us. And if our Iman is strong, our faith is strong, then we are able to drive shaitan away, like Ibrahim and Ismail and what they did with regards to their sacrifice, their faith, their, the strength of their Iman. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us about that faith, about that Iman. And he tells us, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that the believers are those who believe in Allah and believe in his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they have no doubt about their faith, their belief. They do not look back. But they continue to strive with their wealth and with their personal selves in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are indeed the, the, the truthful ones, the God-fearing ones, the ones of piety, the ones of taqwa. Many people today say that they believe. It is just a saying. It is just what we utter. The season that we are just concluding, we saw real belief, real faith. That what Allah commands, we put it into practice. And, and it came from a, a father, it came from a child, it came from a woman. We, we saw in the mother of Ismail, Hagar, when she constantly asked her husband, when she constantly asked Ibrahim alayhi salam, why are you leaving us here? There is no one. There is no food, no water. No one is living here. Why are you leaving us here? And he keep not looking at her, not saying anything. And then when he was asked, is this the command of your Lord? Is this what your Lord has commanded? And he said, yes. And there was no turning back. She 
placed her trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She demonstrated true iman, true faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what iman is really all about, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. It is not just a saying. It's not just saying that we believe in Allah and his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but it is all about action. Those who strive with their wealth and with their personal selves in the path of Allah. There is no turning back. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah has placed the people of faith and it has to be it has to be something of great importance your faith your iman allah has given them prestige the people of faith and iman allah he says in the quran inna ladhina amanu wa amilu salihat ulaika hum khayrul bariya verily those who believe in allah and they do righteous deeds Allah says, Ula'ika humul khayrul bariya. They are the best. Look at the honor, the prestige. They are the best of Allah's creation. You just don't believe and do nothing about the belief. Wa'amilu salihat. And those who do righteous deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ula'ika hum khayrul bariya they are the best of the human beings the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and look at what allah says about them jazaa'uhum 'inda rabbihim jannatu 'adnin tajri min tahtiha al-anhar khalidina fiha abada their reward what is their reward they will have jannat they will have paradise they will have gardens beneath which rivers flow they will dwell therein forever they will be in lofty mansions as allah mentions in other parts of the quran And not only that, Allah, he says, radiyallahu anhum. Allah is pleased with them. Waradu an, and they are pleased with themselves. If we were to ask to ourselves that question, are we ready? To return to Allah are we pleased with ourselves in the it's not only for us but it's something that we can ask others are we really pleased with ourselves that if death was to come at this moment that we are happy to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleasure the pleasure of Allah and the pleasure that we experience ourselves, Allah, He says in the Quran, that pleasure that you experience, that yes, you are pleased with yourselves, that you have done justice with regards to the surrendering of our lives to the commands of Allah, and that Allah would be pleased with us, it only comes for those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ خَشِيَ رَبَّهِ That is for those who fear. Whenever you think about doing something, you think about Allah. You think about uh, the consequences. You think about the rewards. You think about the punishment. So often we do things and it is based on our egos and our emotions. So often we do things and, and we don't think about consequences. 
we only think about ourselves. If we have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we will think about others. We will think about implications. We will think about consequences. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we are indeed living in an era of greed in an era of wastefulness we are living in a time of laziness people just don't want to do anything we are living in an era of self-promotion we are just looking to exalt ourselves we, we need to move away from this and we need to create a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a, a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us humble a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us understand that we are very insignificant with regards to whatever we know because with Allah everything is complete and with us there is incompleteness and so at no time regardless of what we have you can have all the money in the world. You can be doctors, you can be attorneys, you can be engineers, you can have all the education, you can have all the status. But always remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than that. And Allah is ghani. And we are fuqara. Allah is rich, we are the poor ones. When you have that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is being realized. And so we need to create that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to constantly strive for self-development. That we, we move ourselves from one level to another. Don't make every day look the same. Manistawa yawmahu fahuwa maghboon. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the one whose two days are equal in accomplishment is a sure loser. We strive for excellence, we want betterment. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, this period that we have just exiting the, the, the family is so important and, and we cannot stop emphasizing the importance of family because we are losing our families and, and never think that just because you are praying and just because you're giving some charity, and just because you're giving something, you're doing something good, and your family is not doing it, that you need to segregate yourselves from them or keep away from them. I, I, I want to implore you, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, that we use every opportunity that we have to bring families together. There must be something common that you can come together on. Inshallah, that will help to, to build upon other things. There are families that began to pray and began to fast and to give charity and to do wonderful things that never used to do it, but just because they, they felt love and they felt compassion, and they felt that people care for them. 
simple things. You know, it might only be one thing. There, there are so many families that did not care about giving or, or making sacrifice at the time of Eid al-Adha. And you give them simple things and show them that you can, you can do it. You can, you, you can make a difference. And when you tell them that they can make a difference in the lives of people in different parts of the world, and it's only, it's only a, a, a little fraction of your money. They were not praying, they were not fasting, they were not doing all the things that we might be doing, but that's something that you were able to bring a commonality and you were able to make them give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's so many other things, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. And so we need to strive every opportunity that we have to bring our families together. Always look for a cause and volunteer, strive, give to that cause. You know, a masjid like a Masjid as Siddiq and so many other masajid. Isn't Somalia a cause? Isn't Afghanistan a cause? It isn't so many other places where Muslims are suffering and they need help. They need us to, to do something for them. And not even Muslims, other people. Think about them. If you can do things for others, that's where your importance lies. It's not only in doing for yourselves. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, it's a period that we talked or we, we were being reminded of Everything is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If there is nothing else that you take away from my reminder here tonight, uh, today, just remember that each one of us, we have responsibility. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Kullukum mas'ul, wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyatihi. Every one of us, we are shepherds. And we are responsible for our flock. We are responsible for those who come under us. He says, Arrajulu, the man, the head of the home, he's Masul. The mother or the wife, she is Masula. She is she has that responsibility. The servant has a responsibility. Every one of us we have a responsibility. If we look in the Quran, Allah tells us about the head of the household, your responsibility. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum naro. O you who believe, save yourselves and your families from the fire of hell. Educate them. Instill within them adab, good mannerism, that they behave well. But when they speak, they speak good words. When they act, they have good actions. Teach them what is required for them to be able to achieve success both in this world and in the world hereafter. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said about uh, the mother in the home, Paradise lies at the feet of thy mothers. 
mothers can pave the way to heaven for their children. J just don't love them and spoil them, but love them and, free and, and teach them what life requires from them. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he instructed his companions by his lifestyle, the way he lived, the way he did things. He showed them how they should act around young ones. He showed them why it's important to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every moment of their lives and to fulfill your purpose. And so Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Murru awladakum bis salat wa hum abna sab'a sinin wa dribuhum alayha wa hum abna ash Command your children to pray when they have reached the age of seven. And punish them or reprimand them when they have reached the age of ten and they are not praying. So many of our children do not know how to pray, much less praying. This is upon us. What do we do for them? How do we instill the love of salah within them? You just heard madrasa is reopening. Do you know how many children are sitting idly at home watching TV on Saturday morning or Sunday morning, their favorite shows? And parents may be lying in bed, but they do not take the time to bring them out so that they can, uh, they can associate with Muslims, be together with those who uh, are engaged in the remembrance of Allah, be together with those who are learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, that's what this period has taught us, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. Sacrifice. What are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to give up some of that time? Are you willing to make some effort? Are we, are, are we willing to do more than we have done in the past? Say my prayers and my sacrifice. This whole purpose of life. My dying, everything is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we willing to make sacrifice so that we can be proud of, that they can bring a comfort to our eyes? Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhuriyatina kurrata ayun. Our Lord grant us from our spouses and our progeny, our children, the comfort, the coolness of our eyes. It doesn't come by dressing them up giving them beautiful clothes and beautiful cars and all the accessories of life, give them all the different amenities that you can find, all the, the, the technology, coolness of the eyes and comfort doesn't come through that, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. It comes when you, can, when, when you see them praying, when you see them memorizing Quran, when you see them doing good things that they, when they stand in front of an adult, they say words of kindness, goodness. When, 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 they, when they engage in something, they do it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That brings coolness. That brings comfort. How much sacrifice are we willing to make to accomplish, to acquire that, my dear brothers and my dear sisters? Allah, he says in the Quran, 
وأمر أهلك بالصلاة واستبر عليهم. And command your family to do what they were created for. They were created to worship. Command them to worship. And be constant on it. Sometimes we have masses at the time of Eid. And people are only concerned about, uh, you know, you made mistake and you did not make mistake and this day was the Eid and that day was the Eid. And when you look around, thousands of them, that's the only salah that they are praying for the whole year. And they want to make the, the decision for those who have been praying their whole year. Those who have been praying five times and doing what is required of them. Allah is telling us that you must command them, you must make sure that they pray constantly, they, they observe their prayers. How much effort do we make to make sure that our families are praying? That they are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Everything that Allah has given to us, every event, every occasion, every, every historical thing that we are being reminded of, there is some significance, there is some importance. Don't make it just go away. Don't wait for next year, Eid al-Adha and Hajj for you to be reminded about its significance and its importance. We are being reminded constantly as the year go by of different things so that we can put it into practice so that we can make our faith stronger, so that we can become stronger believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that we can continue to make sacrifices. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, I urge you, don't allow the norm of the society where there is laziness and wastefulness and self-promotion and people not caring about others don't allow this environment to lead you astray in terms of this environment you are en engulfed in this en environment where you don't think about any anyone or anything else strengthen that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and work on your families there may be something common that can bring you together a, a, a few weeks ago I, I said some of these same things in a khutbah and there were two brothers who were sitting in the masjid listening to the khutbah. Their father just passed. The next day, Saturday, would have been his janazah. Someone came to me afterwards and said, I, I hope and pray that these two brothers, that they have listened to the khutbah. Do you know that their father just died and they're not talking to one another? And the next day, they were going to pray the janazah for their father. We, you are connected with this man through blood. And you are not speaking to one another. And you're going to go stand in the same line to pray his last prayers. This is what is happening in our communities, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. We need to seriously work on our families. And to make sure that we find something or a multitude of things that are common among us so that we can stay together. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May he give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may he save us from the torment of hellfire. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-mu'min minat min kulli dham fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, 
Wassalatu wassalamu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in Ridwanullahi alayhi mila yawmiddin amma ba'd My dear brothers and my dear sisters We are being reminded that every people, every community will go through tests and trials Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna likulli ummatin fitna, wa fitna tu ummati al-mal. Verily, every nation or every community, every people will undergo test. And the test of my people is wealth and Allah gives us so much this season that we are exiting we are being reminded inna atayna kal kawthar verily we have given you in abundance and that's not only for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it is for all of us Allah has given us, that's a test for us. What, what is it that we will do with what Allah has bestowed upon us? What is it that we will do with what Allah has bestowed upon us? We, we need to overcome our test and our challenges, and it comes through real sacrifice. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, th there are many things that we will like in life and there are many things that we will dislike in life. We have to look at things that we see some importance to and some benefit and when there is benefit to it, we, we, we strive to cooperate with people and make sure it happens and we put, give a helping hand so it becomes successful. No matter where you go, which mas masjid, which organization, you will always find that there is something that you do not like, that something could have been done better or something could have been done in a different way. But always remember, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, that these massages and these organizations and these individuals and these, these groups, they are serving a purpose. Can you imagine life without them? Can you imagine your life without Masjid al-Siddiq? and Masjid al abidin and Masjid Ahlul Qur'an wa Sunnah and all these different groups. Can you imagine life without these organizations like Isna and Ikna and, and, and all these, uh, these different uh, uh, organize, relief organizations? Can you imagine life without these people who have been dedicating their lives to doing something good for others? So yes, you will have difference with other people. There will be dislikes, there will be likes, there will be things that you might have a different opinion about. But, but let us strive to work together to make a difference for the masses, for the people. It's not about me, it's not about you. It's not the, about the individuals who are in leadership. It's about community benefiting it's about people benefiting and so my dear brothers and my dear sisters i want to leave you with this saying of our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said la tadkhulu al janna hatta tu'minu wa la tu'minu hatta tahabu aw la adullukum ala shay'in idha fa'altumuhu tahabbtum he says, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will not enter paradise until you believe. And you will not believe until you love one another. 
and he says, do I tell you of something that will make you love one another? And he says, Afshu wa salam bainakum, spread peace among yourselves. Show that love and concern for one another. Show that you care for people. If you reverse this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, that when you extend that love and compassion, when you show kindness, when you, you, are, you are a peaceful person, humble, kind, people will love you and you will love them. That's a demonstration of Iman, faith. And when you have faith, inshallah, your abode will be in the paradise, the, the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, don't make this period that we are exiting go in vain. We just move from one period to another. But let us learn lessons and implement those lessons into our lives. Sacrifice. What are we willing to give up? What are we willing to do so as to make a difference in the lives of others, especially in the lives of our family members? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may he save us from the torment of hellfire. لَقَدْ أَمَرَنَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ حَيْثُ قَالْ إِنَّ اللَّهُ مَلَائِكَتُهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim ala abdika wa rasulika muhammad Wa arda Allahumma an khulafaihi al arba Abi Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali Wa nisitati al-baqin wa mubashirin bil jannah Wa nisairi al-sahaba Wa nitabi'ina wa man tabi'ahum bisan illa yawmiddin Allahumma aiza islam wal muslimin Allahumma nawwir kulubana bin nur al-eeman Wa thabbit kulubana ala deen al-islam ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم عباد الله إن الله يمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي ذكم لكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله لا نعمه واشكروه على آلائه ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنون كم السنة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر